Hello everybody. I hope that everyone is having a nice summer so far. Um, yeah, I know the weather has been less than ideal. We did have a beautiful day a couple days ago though. I, I spent as much time as I could outside. I hope you guys did too. Alright, so let's continue with Wait Till Helen Comes by Mary Downing Hahn. We are on chapter 12. Molly, Mom called from the kitchen door. Come here, honey. Reluctantly, I walked toward the house. I wasn't ready to see Heather or Dave, but I couldn't sit outside by myself forever. What do you want? I asked Mom. Let's see what we can do with your room, okay? Dave is helping Michael, and I thought I'd help you. Unhappily, I followed her down the hall, past Michael's door. Glancing in, I saw him sifting through heaps of rubbish while Dave held a black plastic garbage bag already bulging with things broken beyond repair. Where's Heather? I asked Mom as we started, stared at the room, wondering where to start. Watching television, I guess. I thought it would be best if she stayed out of this. Having her around is, always increases the tension. So, silently, the two of us worked, and after a couple of hours, we carried the last garbage bag out. My side of the room was now stripped bare of everything I owned. It looked as impersonal as a motel room. All the things that I had collected were gone. In fact, it seemed to me that my whole personality was gone, destroyed by Helen. I'm going to start dinner now, Molly. Mom gave me a big hug and kiss and left me sitting on my bed trying not to cry. A sound in the hall made me look up. Heather was standing in the doorway, staring at me. Behind her, the hall was dark and full of shadows, and I felt a tiny pinch of fear, imagining that Helen watched me over Heather's shoulder. What do you want? I asked uneasily. She took her time answering, twisting a long black strand of hair around her finger. She walked slowly toward me, her eyes never leaving mine. Stopping a few inches away, her face too close to mine for comfort, she whispered, Are you going to tell who did it? Who would believe me? I shrank back against the wall, wanting to put some distance between us. An awful little smile twitched the corners of Heather's mouth. You believe it, though, don't you? You saw her. You saw what she wrote on your wall. Is she really your friend? I stared into Heather's huge gray eyes, sure for a moment that I saw fear in them. We're just alike, Heather said, her voice quavering a tiny bit. She understands me, and I understand her. She's my true sister, forever and ever. The intensity in her face made cold chills run up and down my arms. Even the hair on the back of my neck prickled. No, Heather, I whispered. She's not your sister. She's evil and wicked and horrible, and you better stay away from her. I was sitting up straight now, and my voice was rising. I grasped her thin arms, my fears for myself forgotten. Don't go near her. Heather twisted away, her face pale and anxious. Shut up, Molly, shut up, she cried. Helen is my friend, the only one I've ever had. Don't you dare take her away from me. As Heather ran out of the room, she hurled one last threat at me. I'll tell her to come again, she cried, and this time she'll do something worse. A few minutes later, Mom called me to dinner. While we ate, I watched Heather pick at her food, eating practically nothing. Every now and then, she lifted her eyes to mine. She neither smiled nor frowned, but gazed at me until I looked away, scarcely able to eat my own chicken. Later that evening, after the dishes were washed and put away, we all settled down in the living room. While Michael and I watched National Geograph a National Geographic special about polar bears, Mom read a novel, and Dave played checkers with Heather. After a couple of games, she climbed in his lap and fell asleep, her thumb in her mouth with her eyes closed. She looked small and helpless, almost sweet. As I watched Dave carry her off to bed, I promised myself that I would protect her somehow. No matter how much trouble Heather had caused, I couldn't let Heather, Hel Helen lead her into Harper Pond. From now on, I'd try to keep an eye on her day and night. Suddenly uneasy. I glanced at the window and the darkness it framed. A gust of wind tossed the bushes, and their branches scraped across the screen. 
For a moment, I thought I saw a pale face peering into the living room, silently observing us. I gasped, and the face vanished into the night as quickly as the moon slips behind a windblown cloud. What's the matter? Michael turned to me, a piece of popcorn poised halfway to his open mouth. Nothing. I moved away from him, ashamed to tell him what I thought I'd seen, and snuggled next to the wall. Excuse me. With my head on her shoulder, I felt safe, especially when she slid her arm around me and gave me a hug. The sound of Mr. Simmons' mower woke me in the morning. Heather's bed was empty, so I dressed quickly, anxious to keep the promise I'd made last night. She mustn't go off alone, I thought. She mustn't go to the graveyard at Harper Pond. She mustn't go near Helen. The kitchen was deserted, so I ate a quick breakfast and ran across the drive to the church. Mom and Dave were hard at work in the loft, trying to salvage at least some of Mom's canvases. And Heather was pouting by the window, drawing pictures in an old sketchbook. It was very hot and stuffy, and no one seemed particularly happy to see me. Do you want me to help? I asked uncertainly. No, no, Mom said hastily. Just take Heather outside. It's much too warm for her to stay cooped up in here. I'm not going anywhere with her, Heather scowled at me. I'm staying right here with my daddy. But honey, Dave said patiently, there's nothing for you to do here. Wouldn't you rather go somewhere with Molly? You could wade in the creek or go see the cows. Dave's voice had taken a tone of honey pleading. He was begging Heather to be normal, to do what ordinary little girls enjoy. She merely stuck her lip out farther. I like it here, she whined. Don't you want me to be here? Don't you love me, Daddy? Oh, sweetie, of course I love you. Dave left it, the heap of wood he had been trying to re re reassemble as an easel and hugged Heather. I thought you'd have more fun playing. Not with her. Heather gave me a dark look from under the cloud of black tangles. You know how mean she is. Go on outside, Molly, Mom said. Maybe you can find Michael. He said something about going down to the swamp to catch insects for a new collection. As I left the church, I saw Mr. Simmons pushing a wheelbarrow sorry, full of grass clippings toward the compost heap. Good morning, Molly, he called. Is it hot enough for you? I nodded. It wasn't even ten o'clock and I was perspiring, uh, sweating, just in case you don't know. Uh, have you seen Michael? He shook his head. I brought the fishing stuff with me, hoping he might be around, but your mother told me he left the house early to catch bugs. Quite the young naturalist, isn't he? Coming to a halt beside me, Mr. Simmons set the wheelbarrow down. Do you know anything about this? He held up a peanut butter jar full of fresh daisies. I found them under the oak tree by that little tombstone. The third time I've seen them there. Heather does it, I said slowly. She puts them there every day. I thought I told you kids to stay away from that end of the graveyard. Didn't I warn you about the snakes and the poison ivy? Dumping the daisies into the wheelbarrow, Mr. Simmons paused to light his pipe. I hear you folks had a lot of trouble here yesterday. Were robbed or something? Bob Green says he never saw anything like it. I stared at the flowers lying limply on top of the grass clippings. It was horrible, I said softly, but I don't think they'll ever catch the one who did it. Why not? Mr. Simmons puffed on his pipe, waiting for me to answer. Well, I said, glancing toward the graveyard, remember the day you s we saw you at Harper House and we talked about ghosts? I searched his face, expecting him to laugh. When he didn't, I went on. I think this graveyard is haunted, too. I've heard folks say that. My own sister was scared to death of it. Wouldn't go near it after dark. But she was always fearful, afraid of her own shadow. I smiled. Mr. Simmons' sister sounded like me. The policeman said people don't like to drive by here late at night. I picked up one of the daisies and twisted its green stalk around my finger. And what do you think, Molly? Mr. Simmons regarded me through a cloud of sweet-smelling pipe smoke. Have you ever seen anything? I looked down at the daisy and began to strip its petals away, one by one. She's real. She's not real. She's real. She's not real. I thought as I watched the petals drift to the ground. Raising my eyes to his, I said, I've seen Helen. And so has Heather. I paused, waiting for him to laugh, to tell me I was crazy. 
When he didn't say anything, I went on. Heather says Helen is her friend. She told Michael and me that Helen would come to make us sorry for being mean to her. It was Helen who wrecked our things yesterday. She came just like Heather said he, she would. My voice was shaking now, and I had to stop. Tossing the last pedal to the ground, I realized I had ended with, she's real. For a few seconds, Mr. Simmons and I were silent. All around us, birds sang and insects chirped their summer songs. But no breeze blew. The leaves of the trees hung limply, and the sun was hot on my head and shoulders. Finally, Mr. Simmons cleared his throat. Why would Heather tell you something so awful? He asked me. Because she hates us, I said dully, feeling ashamed, as if it were my fault somehow. She hates Mom for taking Dave away from her, and she hates Michael and me for being Mom's children. Didn't the policeman tell you that only our stuff was destroyed? Nothing that belonged to Heather or Dave was touched. This is a very strange story, Molly, Mr. Simmons said. If I hadn't heard something like it before, I'd think you made it all up. But my own sister was convinced that our cousin Rose was led to her death in Harper Pond by the very spirit you've described to me. I didn't believe it at the time, but my sister went to her grave convinced that Rose was possessed by Helen Harper. I stared at him, my heart thumping. Do you think Heather is in danger? I asked. He fidgeted with his pipe. Oh, it all sounds so crazy, he said, especially standing here in the sunlight. But I've seen her, I said. I've seen Helen. He picked up the handle of the wheelbarrow and began pushing it toward the compost heap. All I can say is, keep Heather away from this graveyard. Don't let her near Harper House or the pond. For a moment, I stood still, watching Mr. Simmons walk away. Then I shoved open the graveyard gate and ran toward the oak tree. Overhead, a breeze sprang up, chasing sunlight and shadows across Helen's small stone. Instinctively, I stretched my hands toward the grave and whispered, Leave Heather alone. Leave her alone. Nothing happened. A crow flew out of the branches over my head, cawing harshly. The breeze made a dry, whispery sound in the leaves, and then all was still. I stared at the earth, mounded over Helen's grave. Beneath it was her coffin. In her coffin were her bones. I imagined her skeleton lying on its back, her skull staring up into the darkness, held fast by the earth, cradled in the oak tree's roots, trapped forever. I looked at my own arms, still outstretched and saw the veins running blue under my skin, the bones underneath them, my skeleton, my bones. Someday, they would be all that was left of me. They would lie all alone in the dark and the cold while the years spun past, years I would never see. I wouldn't feel the sun on my back anymore. I wouldn't hear the wind rustling the leaves. I wouldn't smell the sweet scent of honeysuckle. I wouldn't see the green grass growing over me. I wouldn't think about what I would do tomorrow. I wouldn't write any poems or read any books. All my memories would die with me, my thoughts and ideas. I backed away from Helen's grave. It was horrible to die, horrible. Just to think of myself ending, being gone from the earth forever, terrified me. As a shadow slanted across the tombstone, I wondered if it might not be better to live on as a ghost. At least some part of Helen remained. Turning my back on the oak tree, I ran out of the graveyard, anxious to get away from the bones buried under my feet. But knowing that would be Sammy ringing his bell. <laughs> but knowing I couldn't get away from the bones under my skin, no matter how fast I ran, they would always be there. Always. Even when I would no longer be alive to feel them. Well, Hannah is getting pretty morbid, isn't she? <laughs> uh, interesting turn of events where she... I'm sorry, Molly. Hannah's the other book. <laughs> um, she, uh, she's getting pretty protective of Heather now, so that's a definite change. I wonder where this is headed. Actually, I already know because I pre-read the book. But uh, uh, sorry for the choppiness of the video. I pause when I need to cough. I'm still on the tail end of that cold. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be completely gone soon. All right, tune in next time for chapter 13. That was the end of chapter 12. Bye!